Hello class. In this lesson we're going to learn about rotations. So first let's talk about transformations in general. So transform means to change. And in geometry, that means we're taking a point and we're either moving it somewhere or we're keeping it in the same spot. Uh, when the length of segments and the measurements of angles don't change, that type of transformation is called the basic rigid motion. Right? Rigid means that it's not changing shape. A dilation, however, will keep the angle measurements the same, but not the segment lengths, right? So it can get bigger or smaller in dilation. So that's not a basic rigid motion. And the figure we deal with before the transformation is called the pre-image, and after the transformation is the image. So I'd like you to take a moment and look at these three examples. So we have uh, the three basic rigid motions here. And think about what information you would have to tell someone in order to perform the uh, shown transformation. So what would they have to know exactly to do this rotation, to do this reflection, or to do this translation? So pause it for a moment and think about it. And so for a rotation, hopefully you thought, well, we got to know what we're turning it around. That's called the center of rotation. You got to know which way you're going, and you have to know how far you're going. For a reflection, all you have to know is the line that you're reflecting it over. And for a translation, you have to know the direction you're going, so an angle measurement, and you have to know how far you're going. And that can be described as a vector. This term might be new for you. A vector is a segment, but it has a direction. And so this vector, it has this length, magnitude, but it's going up and to the left. So we can describe that with an angle measurement or by just drawing the vector on a plane. So some assumptions. In addition to what we already talked about with uh, segment length and angle measurements, basic rigid motions also will map lines to lines, rays to rays, and segments to segments. So those uh, basic figures aren't changing. And some vocab. We've already talked about basic rigid motions. It's one of those three. Distance preserving means that if you pick any two points in the images, that the corresponding two points in the pre-image, will, uh, those will have the same distance. So distance isn't changing. And angle preserving, similarly, if you measure any angle in the image, that will be the same as the measurements from the pre-image. And here's an informal definition for a rotation. You're just turning a figure around a point. We'll get to a more rigorous one in a moment. But here's one that shows this little flag here being rotated around point P. And there's a notation for that. Just like a function, here is our function. It's a big R. And on the inside, we have the point Q that's being rotated, the input. And so how do we read this? One way to read it is saying that we're rotating point Q 40 degrees around P. So there's two parameters here. You have the center of rotation and the amount you're rotating. And also, if you look here, we have R and this R with an apostrophe. That's, that's called R prime, and this is called Q prime. So the convention is whenever you do a transformation, you generally will keep the same letter for that point, but just add an apostrophe to it, and it's pronounced prime. If we were to do another transformation, we would call it Q double prime, or R double prime, and so on. So now let's go back to talking about angle measurements and rotations. The convention is, in mathematics, that if you don't have, a, if you have an angle measurement given and it's positive, you're going counterclockwise. Or, if it's negative, you're going clockwise. Or another way you can do it is, if you just have a degree measurement, you can put the abbreviation CW next to it to mean clockwise. So we'll, we'll see that in some examples. So here's our more rigorous definition of rotation. Basically, it's saying, when you do a rotation, the center is not changing. It stays in the same spot. But everything else is going to move around the center a certain amount of degrees. And we use this letter. That's a Greek letter called theta. And that's uh, conventionally used to, use, uh, to represent angle measurements. 
And if we rotate something zero degrees, it's not moving at all. So that's an identity. And you got to be careful. When we go over 180 degrees, when we're talking about uh, rotations, you can think of it as rotations of smaller degree put together or composed. Uh, you know, because the protractor only has up, has up to 180 degrees on it. So you got to be careful, though. So for example, 240 degrees, you can think of it as doing 80 degree rotations three times. So let's actually look at some diagrams and figure out how we can find angles of rotation and centers of, of rotation. Sorry. So what you want to do is, here's our center D. And we want to connect that to a point in the pre-image. Let me connect it to point A. Now we want to connect the center to the corresponding point in the image. So let's connect it to A prime. Now if we measure this angle, this will be the angle measurement from our rotation. So we start from the zero here, line up the zero with one side, and we are going 10, 20, 30, 40, let's see, we're going 75 degrees. So keep that in mind, 75 degrees. But now think, which direction are we going? We are going to, we're going uh, clockwise. Right? You can't say left or right here because uh, that's ambiguous. Right? If we're going to the right, then on the bottom, you're really going to the left because it's going clockwise. So you can't really say left or right with rotations. And so a few ways you can write this. So like we said originally, we said this is 75 degrees clockwise. Okay, another way to write that is just putting a negative in front of 75 degrees. Or, if you want to think of it in terms of a counterclockwise rotation, you can just subtract this amount from 360. So 360 minus 75, 285. Similar example, but now our center of rotation is not a point on the image or the pre-image. Same idea. Connect the center to a point in the pre-image, which you see this time, and then connect it to a point in the image, the corresponding point, C prime. Put the center of the protractor on the center of rotation, and turn it around so the zero lines up, and let's see, that looks like it's 50 degrees. So I think about which direction you're going. You're going clockwise or counterclockwise. We are going counterclockwise. So the answer could just be 50 degrees. Oh, that's wrong. Hold on a sec. <laughs> OK, sorry about that. 50 degrees, or 310 degrees clockwise, or negative 310 degrees. So here's one where we want to find the center of rotation and the angle of rotation. So to find the center of rotation, we're going to follow these steps here. Basically, you have to draw two perpendicular bisectors. So first, I'm going to connect. Uh, and you can pick whatever pairs of points you want. Let's do C and C prime. So I know it says A and B in the problem up here in the steps, but you can change this to whatever points you want. And so let's find the perpendicular bisector here. So to do that, we're going to take the compass and open it up to the other endpoint. Draw a circle there. Without changing how large it is, go to the other endpoint and draw a circle. And so if we connect these two points, we have a perpendicular bisector of CC prime. And the center of rotation is going to be the intersection of this with another one of the perpendicular bisectors. So I'm going to delete these circles so it's easier to see. So I'm going to repeat this process for another pair of points. Uh, let's do B and B prime. As I'm doing this, let's think about why this construction works. Well, remember when we did the circumcenter? How did we construct that? Well, we took a side of a triangle, and we found the perpendicular bisector that went through it. Was this too big? That one that might not work. 
Well, as long as it's more than half, we can still draw the perpendicular bisector fine. So it doesn't matter. So we did the circum center. We found a perpendicular bisector of a side. And we wanted to figure out where that cut the other perpendicular bisector. And that gives us the center of a circle. And so you can think of the center of a circle as lying on the perpendicular bisectors of chords on the circle. And so whenever we do a rotation, that rotation is really part of a circle. And so if we just draw some of some of these perpendicular bisectors and see where they intersect, that will give us the same uh, center we're looking for. So it's not going to be a, a circumcenter in this case, but it's the same basic principle on how we're finding it. And let's see, this one looks pretty good. Let's delete these blue circles here. And there are two perpendicular bisectors. And so they cross at a point, let's call it P. So P is right about here. OK, so now we have our center. And if we want to measure the angle, all I got to do is connect, like we did before, connect that center of rotation to a point in the pre-image and the point in the image. And it looks like here, let's see, put the center on the point, rotate it around. And it looks like we get, let's see, just about 85 degrees. Well, 85 degrees, or any of these two alternate uh, ways of writing it. And finally, let's actually perform a rotation. So to do that, let's rotate this uh, segment. Here are the steps. You might want to put those in your notes. And I'm going to just walk us through them here. So connect your center of rotation to your points. In the image, I'm sorry, in the pre-image, and then let's draw a 60-degree angle using that side. So let's see, 60 degrees right here. Okay, so that gives us a degree measurement. Now I want to figure out where exactly on this side is a prime going to be. So to do that, take out your compass. Put the center on F and open it up to A. So this is the distance from F to A. So if we just draw an arc over here where it crosses, that's going to give us A prime. I'm going to draw a point there and I'm going to label A prime. OK, there's A prime. So now we want to do the same thing for B. So I'm going to delete these so it looks a little bit nicer. And let's repeat those steps for B. So B is in the pre-image, and we want to find B prime in the image. So line it up again. We want to go 60 degrees. And let's see, 60 degrees is right here. And then we're going to, oops, then we're going to line up the compass with F and B this time. Now we're going to cut this side. This point is going to become B prime. And so now we just connect the two points, and we have our segment. And so you could do this for any figure, uh, and then you would just connect the corresponding points in the correct order. So in this lesson, we learned how to find sensors uh, and angles of rotation, and also how to perform rotations. Thanks for watching this video.